I'm wondering where the philosophical term or landscape of realism fits into what we've d- been discussing. I take it since these are theories and not interpretations. I mean, whatever theory you accept, you're a realist about the ontology it postulates. But then David mentioned that Bohr was an instrumentalist, and I don't think of being an intro an instrumentalist as being a realist. So I'm wondering if there is more complexity. Yeah, I, just... again, I don't, I don't think that's a correct reading of Bohr. I mean, I think to understand Bohr, you first have to understand that he was brought up in, in, in a place where there's a lot of neo-Kantianism. And actually, a lot of what he says is through the lens of Kant in weird ways um, that, you know, no normal physicist nowadays would even have an an inkling what was motivating Bohr to say some of the stuff he said, because he had this philosophical background in neo-Kantianism. Um, and I don't, I mean, I'll just say how I use words. I think a physical theory makes definite postulates about its ontology. Now you say, are you realist about that? Well, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, they're just definite postulates about what really exists. I mean, I don't, I don't see how you can do physics and not be doing that. <laughs> Then there's a question, which is the question I call scientific realism, which is an epistemic question. It it goes, okay, I have this theory. It makes definite postulates. Say this one says there are particles. This one says there are no particles. Okay, they're different theories. And the empirical data I have, plus maybe other principles of rationality, make it reasonable to believe, that is to put a fairly high subjective credence Mm -hmm. on one of these and against the other one, right? And to that extent, I'm a scientific realist because I think, well, yeah, sometimes it can. I mean, I think, yeah, I think there are electrons. I think there are quarks. I think, you know, we've worked out that there are, you know, super clusters of galaxies and all kinds of things. Um, that our evidence for them is so strong. It's not to say it's absolutely probative and maybe this whole thing will be overthrown, Mm -hmm. but that a rational person should be happy to say, I believe there are electrons. Um, Mm -hmm. To that extent, I'm a scientific realist. Now, I I don't know. We may well end up with different candidate fundamental physical theories that are different theories because they make different postulates about what exists and how it behaves that cannot be distinguished experimentally. And there aren't even, there are no other even kind of plausible rational principles to say this one's much more plausible than that one. In which case I'd say, well, in that case, you shouldn't make up your mind, right? You shouldn't have a strong, you shouldn't have a strong bias to thinking this one's right and that one's wrong because the evidence just isn't strong enough to do that. As a fi- scientific realist, I think sometimes the evidence is strong enough to do that, but not. I'm not committed to saying always it is. That depends on how things play out. <laughs>